11, 9, 11. So I've already checked the far side of the house down here. That's all good to go. As you can also see after we did our wood brightening, how much lighter everything has got. Really brought out the grain of the wood real nice. Now we're gonna start to apply the capture stain. Here I'm making sure that the mixture is totally touching the bottom of the bucket to get any of the sediment off the bottom that, and colorant that might have settled. Here I'm using our drill mixer to make sure that all of the colorant is off the bottom. Very imperative that we thoroughly mix up the buckets. So one of the other tips and tricks that we'll do here is we will set a wet, damp rag. Now we got the rag soaking wet, just wrung them out. We'll set those over the bucket. All right, so here we are. We're getting ready to apply the stain. Slowly put that stain on. A little bit more pressure here. So we are flooding the surface so it will not accept anymore. Take my stain, a real close up. I want to make sure that the first coat is absolutely drenched. Every square inch is totally saturated. If you don't do that, your second coat is going to soak in at areas and you'll see highs and lows. Longest part of the day, getting your stain applied to the surface. Here what we're making sure is that to get the stain applied with the sprayer so much faster. Now another thing that we want to make sure of, as you can see here, when I do these edges, I'm not trying to get it on the face right here. Then it'll dry, and then when I put the other coats on it, it'll keep getting darker and darker. So we're pretty much taking it one section at a time. Right here, I can see I got quite a bit of stain. Grab it from the bottom so it doesn't drip down. This edge, I want to make sure right inside here that this edge gets totally saturated the entire time too as well. Brush do the work and be gentle with the brush. You want all these bristles to be nice and in order, not all fluffed out. Here, I let the brush do the work. I angle it in, get all the stain behind here. See, I got a run coming down here, so you constantly have to be watching. And another big important thing is staining in the shade. It is a hundred times easier to stain in the shade than it is in the sun. We're gonna have a second guy come in here and start helping us out here to make sure if there's any runs or drips. That second person is just watching. Make sure nothing dripped out of anywhere like this came down. That's really important too. We can always put more stain on. Here I can see the stain starting to sag a little bit. I'm going to want to come pick that up. If I just came down on it like this, all that stain would drip down below me. And that's what we don't want. Longest part of your day is getting the stain onto the surface. Same with painting. If we were just dipping and brushing in a bucket right now, we'd probably still be right here, down here. Because it's just exponentially slower. Very important to have an airless paint sprayer. Also have the right tip in the airless paint sprayer. Before we've got a little a 215 tip in here, which is you know a very small tip. As you can see, we've got a little bit of fingering here, which means it's lighter there. It's not a big deal when we're staining. If we we're painting, that would be a bad deal. One section at a time. Always hit the bottom of the log first. Turn my brush this way to get up into this, this edge along here. I do it this way. I only have these few bristles that are touching up into this edge. If I do it this way, I've got all these bristles. So I'm actually hitting it 30, 40 times more just off of that one. So here we stop before we get to the end because I can always take the stain I just applied, let the brush do the work. First coat of stain is gonna take twice as long as the second coat of stain. Second coat of stain is not gonna penetrate in. It's gonna just sit on top. And that's just gonna give it that real rich, full color like the rest of the house has. I'm always looking underneath me. Sashko, in their literature, they recommend staining from the top down. I, however, recommend staining from the bottom up because I know everything below me is still wet. So if I do have any runs, drips, or sags, I can catch those. I'm looking back over, here's a prime example right here. So that run would dry deeper if I didn't get that out. That's where the second person would come in handy and they just have a dry brush. Totally dry, never been touched the stain yet. They can just come through and give it one of those. It's looking good. Maybe a little bit right here, as you can see. This little edge. And that's unavoidable. If you're flooding the surface, there's nothing you can do about that. Another one here. Dry brush. It's gone. If you start getting a lot of those, and if this brush gets too filled with stain, you can just take a dry rag, close it around it, squish it, and it'll get the stain out of it. So then it'll be ready to go again. We call it the tip-out brush. Any little runs or anything, just tip them out. Great example where we're at right here. You want to make sure that any of these rough spots are completely saturated. As I'm staining the logs, I don't want to get the stain onto the face of this log. If I get any over on this side, and I wait, and I come back and stain it at the end, you'll see all those spots. So if you want that perfect, perfect look, if you want it to look absolutely perfect, you want to cut in the corner of every log like this, not get any stain on the face of the corners, and then stain the corners all in one continuous piece at the end. If we do get a little bit of stain on that corner, just take your rag, wipe it in, and you 
will be noticeable the next time. These last two short pieces that I sprayed, I sprayed it pretty heavy. So now I got quite a bit of stain still on my brush. So then all I'll need to do for that is just simply come up and shoot brush down. The stain always runs down. Let's brush it out on the next one. I can dry out those bristles. So now if I do have any little runs or drips, I can still grab them with this one or with our tip brush. Up in this crack up here right now, I can see some of it wants to sag down. So that's the crack that I want to take my tip brush. It doesn't have a lot of stain on it. Lightly run her across there. You can see it wanting to come out. It's going to come out. So a good ground guy, second set of eyes, very important for the stain application. We're all putting our clamp back on our spray line so we don't fight that. What I like to do is I can set my stain brush down, let all that stain run out of the bristles as we're gonna go up and move. Since I'm just a one-man band to start the morning out here, I'm only taking two logs at a time, not taking three or four, as when you spray the stain on, you need to make sure that you back brush it in before it starts to dry in. If you don't, what do you do is you just end up having to brush twice as much. And after a couple days of holding this two, three pound brush in your hand, your wrists tend to get a little sore. Just taking two at a time, making sure that it's a nice, even, consistent coat, and flood the surface. Then I put it on kind of heavy, so I'm just going to hit the bottom of the log, bring that up so it doesn't drip down, get half of it, go from the bottom, let your bristles do the work. Why it's so important to have a high quality stain brush. So if you go buy the little $6 do-it-all brush, you're not going to be happy with yourself. You can see I over applied it a little bit too much to my liking. I'm going to pick up that extra steam that I got on my brush, brush it out on a raw log. As long as you do this first coat, a total saturation cannot accept anymore. Like if I do this over and over and over here, it won't accept anymore there. We know that. Now the second coat, the top coat that we'll put on the next coat of stain, that's really important because that's going to go on a lot lighter. So the second coat of stain is twice as fast. If I don't have as much brushing, the second coat's going to stay on top and that's what adds the color. And that's what also allows the color to hold its color over time so the sun doesn't fade it out. Most stains, you're going to restain after a couple, three, four years if they're in the direct sunlight. Where this, we just apply the clear coat. So once we apply the stain, the color will never stain again. Stain it, get it done twice, get it done right, and your maintenance coat is just simply a clear coat for years to come. Getting the stain off. For some reason, you don't do your project correctly and you get adhesion failure, which we've never had in over 20 years. If you had an adhesion failure and you try to sandblast or chemically strip this off, it doesn't come off. It's just tenacious. I think every day we have to say the word tenacious. Another thing too is that when we're brushing out our logs here, one thing you want to watch out for are these knots. These knots will want to tend to drip the stain out. So we're pretty lucky here that it's smooth siding, but for you, those of you who have a full log house and have a lot of knots, you're gonna have one person just constantly going back for an hour after you apply it, making sure that none of those ran out and left a big drip mark. So another little tip here, when I spray the stain on, I don't want to spray the stain to where it's flooding and dripping down constantly. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to lay on just enough stain to where it penetrates in, but not too much to where it drips everywhere. So if I want to go, if I put it on like this, it's too heavy. Now you can see it's starting to run down everywhere here. So now I got to pick it up with the brush right, so it doesn't drip down. But what you tend to do is if you spray it on too heavy, you spend most of your day just chasing your runs and your drips. Where I like to lay on a nice even coat and then brush that in. Remember, you can always add more stain, you can't take it off. So this bottom, I'll go a little bit faster on that. Here I can see we got some little bit of light marks. Not anymore. Too much is not a good thing, and not enough is not a good thing. So there's that happy medium. Here as I come up to my rail, I'm going to let the brush do the work. Get back inside there. Still got a lot of stain on my brush, so I'll hit the next one too. So here we are, we got the uh, first coat of stain applied. It's drying in. Uh, it's probably dry enough already where we can get right back on it. We're gonna give it about another hour. Wrap our brushes in a damp cloth here. So we're gonna take a little 15 minute break and we're gonna come back. We're gonna finish up staining on the railings and then we will add the second coat today. Now we're just gonna spray a light mist coat on everything. 
can usually hit the whole log with one pass. We still have to hit every square inch with our bristles. We're just tipping it out. This is what adds the luster. The more sheen, and then the Sashko Cascade clear coat will go on top of it. Get full even coverage. You can see, I'm not gonna even dip my brush right now. And I can come over to this area and probably have enough stain to do that whole area since it's second coat. There's that nice light mist coat. As long as we have enough to brush into all the knots and all the rough wood, we're good to go. I'm sure you'll be able to see by the camera angle now, and I'm still touching every single square inch of the log. I'm not just doing one of these, you know, oh yeah, it looks good. Because anything like this, you're going to see when it dries in. So if you put this stuff on too heavy on the second coat, you're going to be brushing and brushing and brushing. We were talking about before this is where the run came it's from the first coat we were not absolutely perfect unfortunately not able to sand those out not able to wipe those out they're there that's what we want to watch out for that was from first coat so while we're finishing up this side, we timed it up just about perfect here. The sun's about to come around here, 15-20 uh, minutes, but we're still in the shade, so much easier. You're in the sun, you're not going to have good results, just plain and simple. It doesn't matter how many hands you have on it, and always make sure that you stain in the shade. Here we'd also like to give a big shout out to Lake Wisconsin Construction, specifically Tim and Casey Ryan. Uh, Tim Ryan's the owner, and about 18 years ago was when I first moved to the Madison, Wisconsin area. Everything I owned in the back of a pickup truck. Tim gave me the opportunity to start doing some staining on some log houses. I was old school sickens from day one. I am absolutely sold on the Sashco product. A lot of the houses that you know we did 15 years ago color still the same it hasn't faded out they keep up on the maintenance coat clear just looks beautiful thank you tim also like to give a shout out to my wife today for allowing me to wear my fancy glasses to work not the gas station goggles that i usually get six pack drop your brush you gotta buy through a six pack here we just finished up the one side, put the two coats on it. So we started at 8.30 this morning. We had the first coat on by 11.15. Started back in on the same side that we started on. We got that second coated, and as you can see, the brush is already coming apart. We want to get this washed out, cleaned out. We're going to junk this brush. We'll just clean it out, use it for a dust brush in the future, things like that, because when the, once the bristles start getting like this, then you can't get a clean cut-in line around your fascia or your soffit or anything. Here's the best way to clean your brush. This is called the heel of the brush, not the keel, the heel. Another thing what you don't want to do is leave your brushes in water overnight. They will not be clean enough the next morning. To shake them out extensively if you did try to do it. Heel tends to soak up all the water. So when you start staining, water starts coming out of your brush and you don't want that. We got two coats put on the high side that we started out with. We also got one single coat put on two of the top dormers. We still have this dormer up above us to get two coats on. We have two coats to get on the fascia board that's right up here on this face. Rain tomorrow, back here Monday, finish it up. Make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button. See you Monday.